Good morning, afternoon, evening, and good dawn, fellow Soulsborns fans. This is your boy Cyphrix, wishing you an amazing day. Remember, good days don't just happen, they come to you, and we gotta come together during our time of need here. That said, in less than 24 hours, Remnant is finally coming out with its Swamps of Courses DLC that we've been waiting forever. Cue the cheers, cue the Star Spangled Banner and the parades. It's finally here. The literally indie game of 2019 finally gets its long-awaited DLC. Thank you so much to the guys at Gunfire Games. You guys are amazing. Now, in prep for their release tomorrow, they did release the patch notes, which are huge. They're absolutely monstrously long. I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of what these patch notes bring. And it's a quick summary of both game changes, weapon changes, balances, new features from the game, both free and paid, and of course the new DLC. So let's quit wasting time and just dive into it. Don't pause, press play. As usual, for those new to the channel, thank you so much for clicking my video. I appreciate the time. A lot of effort goes into these, and if you appreciate the info here, or just like my jovial demeanor, please hit the like and subscribe for more info, not only on Remnant, but of other indie games, dope RPGs, action RPGs, and MMOs. Now, I know I do a variety of content on this channel. For those who do not know what Remnant is, it was a Soulsborne-esque third person shooter that was, was released late 2019 last year. It took the world by storm with amazing roguelike content, repeatable and replayable dungeons, bosses, where you could just harvest tons of upgrades, armor, gear, modifications, min match your stats. I mean, this game was like, if you took Souls and Diablo and just like slapped them together. It was an amazing game with infinite replayability and tons of co-op content. Now pan about, you know, half a year later, we have the latest addition to the game, the Swamps of Courses DLC, which in addition to a ton of changes and balances is gonna bring the long awaited for survival mode, which is gonna be a new roguelike mode where you start with no gear whatsoever. You basically go on your regular character, you hit survival mode in the world crystal and boom, you are teleported to the labyrinth with nothing Thing but your underwears and a pistol and a little bit of scrap. This is for you and all your friends that start this game. Survival mode is a procedurally generated mode similar to adventure. When you teleport to the labyrinth, instead of the typical NPCs, and you can see here in the screenshots in the video, you will see pillars and each pillar has like a weapon icon, an item icon, armor icon, where you will see randomly generated pieces of gear and armor. Now these pieces and gear and armor do not need to be upgraded. There is no crafting in survival mode. They took that out just for sake of streamlining it. You also do not have to worry about allocating your traits in survival mode. And I'll get to that in a second. When you start, you have a thousand scrap, you have your pistol, you have to make an executive decision when you start this game on what you're going to buy. And that is where a lot of the strategy lies in. If you're by yourself, you have free reign on what you want to buy. Are you going to be, get a piece of gear? Are you going to get a long gun so you have two weapons? Are you going to get an accessory that maybe helps with your build early game? Not to mention, you do have a starting baseline buff. The host of the recent live streams confirmed that you're going to have a, I think, 150% buff to your or like 50 percent buff to your damage just to help you get out the gate after that the enemy leveling will surpass you now what do i mean by enemy leveling one of the newest features in survival is the ui which is going to be in the upper left corner there you're going to see three bars the first bar is the enemy level the red bar that levels every time the timer there goes down to zero after about five to six minutes the enemies jump a level they get stronger they have more hp and they have uh, more resistances it's going to be the same thing for you on the level below that in the blue bar. That's your level or your team level. Your team is going to level up as you guys get more and more EXP together or you yourself, you know, whatever have you. And as long as you keep your level close to enemy level, the difficulty should be relatively balanced. But if you take too long to trudge through a dungeon, for example, the enemies are going to quickly out level you and it's going to be GG. Also, you should note that dying in this mode is very detrimental, both solo and actually especially solo and both co-op. Now solo, once you die, you die. You go back to the labyrinth, you drop all your gear, you basically restart, but you will have extra scrap whenever you start, about 250 extra scrap per boss or rope boss that you kill. So it makes restarting a little easier. You will not carry over any traits or gear that you got from your previous run. 
when you're in co-op, when you die, you do have a chance for your teammates to resurrect you, and you should. Do not let a teammate bleed out, because once they bleed out, you will not be able to resurrect that teammate until after you fight the boss. The survival mode dungeons do not have crystals in the actual dungeons themselves until after you beat the boss. Matter of fact, when you teleport into the dungeon, the crystal you teleported into shuts down right then and there, and you guys are locked into that dungeon until you beat whatever boss is in front of you. The host during the live stream also confirmed that there will be a solid set pattern when you go through these dungeons of overworld, dungeon, mini boss, overworld, dungeon, mini boss, and then after that it's gonna be overworld and I believe world boss. So you know if you're looking for bosses like Singe or the Trent, you're going to have to get a couple of guys either way beforehand. Now I can already imagine some people are wondering, well, is the DLC only about courses, given that the title of the DLC is Swamps of Courses? Well, the main reason they decided to buff up the whole courses area and experience is because in the main game, courses is actually a skippable world, and the devs wanted to flush it out more because courses is also one of the most interesting, most challenging levels in the game, with all the zombies and the swamp monsters and everything, and the unclean one, and you know, canker, etc. So this level is the focus of this DLC, but it's not the only thing that got buffed. All of the other biomes also got slight buffs and changes as well, in addition to things like new mods, new gear, and slight changes across the board. Courses itself got several new bosses that we saw during the live stream, including the Barb Terror, the Dream Eater, and a few others. They bring a brand new experience to the game, and while they are initially easy in like normal mode, etc., survival mode, they quickly ramp up, especially in co-op, so you gotta be careful about these guys. There's also a new boss encounter, I wanna say, kind of like the root husks that are in Earth. You now have the brain bug in Corsus, which is this giant blobby brain bug thing, kind of like from Starship Troopers. It's a giant slug that just waddles around this little labyrinth while it spawns other enemies to come and attack you. Looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun, and there were definitely some Starship Trooper re references made during the live stream, and I'll link that down below. But the idea is they're bringing a lot more content to the Corsus experience, both in the DLC survival mode but also in the core game so all of the boss encounters and stuff i just mentioned is also in the core game in the other modes both regular and hardcore with survival mode we also got armor skins these armor skins are going to be acquired from a new npc called whisperer who is going to be joining the npcs in ward 13 and will require these fragments that you find from boss encounters in both the normal game and also in survival but the host confirmed that survival is going to be the number one way to get these fragments, especially with the new difficulty that they just introduced, Apocalypse, which goes across all game modes. While it is possible to get a few of these fragments from the bosses in normal and hardcore, survival will drop these incrementally not just from bosses, but also occasionally from elites and higher end mobs in survival mode because elites and high end mobs are the main focus of the game. In survival, elites and high end mobs drop things such as purples and they also drop traits. They're gonna be key to you progressing through survival mode. So keep a lookout for those. But again, mainly keep a lookout for those fragments, which are going to unlock those armor skins from the whisper in war 13. in addition to armor skins we also got a bunch of new weapons as i mentioned just to name a few we got the new carapace armor the labyrinth armor we got the new gun pride of iskal the butcher's flail which is a uh, possibly going to be the unclean one's weapon is now a new alternate kill that you can achieve so good luck figuring that one out uh by the way his head is no longer the weak spot they changed it to his butt cheeks so you know aim for the cheeks we also received a bunch of new amulets and trinkets some of these are amazing such as the daredevil charm which increases damage by 25 percent per missing armor part so you're gonna get a damage bonus for going in naked that's really cool to start the game off with uh you also have the aggressor's bane which is a 15 percent damage reduction across the board and it just increases the enemy's awareness of you by 200 percent so if you're running solo it's just a flat damage it's just a flat damage reduction so enjoy the Black Rose, uh, the host joked that it's potentially one of the most OP weapons in survival mode. And what it does is it doubles the chest effect of your armor. So if you're wearing, say, one part of Cultist, you can wear this Black Rose and it will subsequently basically be another part of Cultist for you. So if you're wearing the Cultist chest, instead of just having just the one Cultist piece bonus, you have two Cultist piece bonus because you have the chest and the Black Rose. Does that make sense? In some cases, this is an amazing piece of armor. In some cases, it's not. 
not. You know, they're leaving it up to us to kind of play around and tweak with it. But it's really cool that they're adding so many new pieces of gear to the already huge plethora of armor and loot that we have in this game. Lastly, this update brings a ton of weapon changes, such as the crossbow becoming amazing. It's like a stealth weapon now. They reduce the range that monsters can pick you up at if you miss a shot, so you can use it for more stealthy gameplay. They completely reworked the ricochet rifle, so it's more of a high yield damaging weapon in groups of you know low end enemies the ruiner weapon got its buff kind of completely tweaked it now has a five minute cooldown to make runs a lot less no death prone you know it, it had such a quick recharge on the resurrection ability that some people just leaned on it too hard overall the driving point of this dlc is to give us a few things that we've been asking for one completely randomized procedural roguelike dungeons harder difficulty tons more loot to find and just more replayability i mean how what else can we ask for so it's coming out tomorrow i'm going to see if i can get my rig to stream it if not i'm just going to record some gameplay either way please join me for the dlc release tomorrow the 28th of april hey I want to say praise the sun. It's kind of the same game, but just wish me luck, guys. Tell me your thoughts down in the comments below. Love, peace, and elevate your hunts. Lates.